Welcome again guys, another problem from population genetics. Another time we are going to use Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. And in this case we will be using slightly advanced mode of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, certain modifications to the equilibrium, but stick to the basics. So let's read this problem. Cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive inherited disease. Its frequency in newborn is 1 out of 1700. One of the following indicates the frequency of the disease carrier. You know, this is a autosomal recessive disease. It's a very common disease, autosomal recessive. You know, that, that, that what does that mean? You know, recessive autosomal disease means the disease will only work if both the alleles are recessive. So, a person will only be uh, attacked by this disease or a person is only be considered as having the cystic fibrosis disease if the genetic makeup is both of those alleles are small. I mean, small means recessive. Let's say the cystic fibrosis gene has, has A, right? So if, if we take this A gene as a cystic fibrosis, because it's an autosomal present in our body, so autosomal chromosome. So capital A, capital A, no disease. Remember, capital A, small a, I'm talking later, small a, small a, this is the only condition, the only condition that cause this disease. If it is having capital A, small a, again, no disease that is what it means by autosomal recessive disease right now in this case so what we'll have if you have capital a small a in turn they will be turned as carriers for the disease because they are having heterozygous trait why because you know let's say let's say if a person is having capital a small a who is disease free right and a woman having a uh, capital A, capital A, for example. No problem. After their marriage, the children that are going to produce, let's say both of them, let's say uh, both of them are normal without having any, any uh, cystic fibrosis disorder in them, male as well as female, both of them. They married, they have the child, and in their child, one is capital A, capital A, one capital A, small, and one gets the small A, small A. That means are diseased. So, as you can see, the parents, though they are not having the cystic fibrosis disease, but still, as they are carrying one of the small a, which is a disease gene, they can transfer it into the next generation, which will cause the cystic fibrosis disease to one of their child, right? So, this is the scenario which can happen, right? So, that's why this, so the individuals carry the small gene in this case, small in the sense, I mean, small letter, in, that means the recessive gene, or recessive allele, can transfer it to the next generation to cause a disease. So, those individuals will be termed as carriers of the disease. So, this particular species will be termed as the carrier here, right? So, once you understand what is carrier and what the thing is, now let's talk about the situation, and that is, the frequency of the disease is 1 in a 1700, right? So, they are giving us the frequency, remember. So, it is always easier to calculate Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium with frequency, right? So, according to Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, if we add both the frequencies, that is recessive and dominant, we will get the value of 1. So, the total frequency of a gene in a population is 1. It will be unchanged from generation to generation. So, let us say here, the frequency here, let us say capital A, capital A, that is the value. Right? So, if you look at the frequencies of gene capital A and small a, that is dominant and recessive, it will give us value of 1. Right? So, you can similarly write this simply, make it a square. And we can also write it in this way, square plus 2a a plus small a square, because simple algebra formula, we can simply write it like this. Right? So, once we write it like this, in the population, remember a square means both a, homozygous dominant, 2 small a square means 2 small a, homozygous recessive and here comes 2 capital A into small a that is 1 dominant, 1 recessive allele. So, it is a heterozygous trait and similarly if you look at in this case, capital A capital A means no disease, this one, small a small a only disease, this one and capital A small a which is no disease but the carrier. So, among them, this particular species is going to be the carrier, right? So, if we get the frequency, if we calculate the frequency of 
a and frequency of small a capital a and small a we can get the value of carriers because that's the question the frequency of the disease carrier so frequency of the carrier capital a small a we get the frequency formula that is 2 into capital a into small a so that's how we can calculate right so what we want here what we require here we require the frequency of capital A, frequency of small a. So let's look at here the frequency of capital A and small a. They have given the frequency of capital A that is ha not having the disease and frequency of small a means having the disease. The, so the frequency of small a that is having the disease is 1 in 1700. So 1 divided by 1700. 0, 0. And here comes the answer. Let me show you 0 0.024 as I have already calculated. That's why I picked it. Now, in this case, what will be the frequency of capital A? Simply, we can calculate 1 minus 0 0.024 because the total frequency is 1 and we get the value of, again, I am looking here, 0 0.976, right? So, we get the values here. Once we get the values, now we can put these values into this formula, right? So, 2 multiplied by capital A means 0 0.976, multiplied by small a means 0 0.024, and as I've already calculated, the answer is going to be 0 0.047. So, this is going to be the frequency for the disease carrier of cystic fibrosis in this particular population. And here comes it, the option B is containing 0 0.047, and that is going to be our correct answer for this question. So, you can see this particular problem requires so many different important small knowledge to be combined to answer, right? Because you need to know how the disease progresses. You need to know what is the carrier. You need to know uh, this frequency values of hardy wayne and equilibrium and how to calculate them. And you need to know the math. So, finally get this answer. So, this type of problem tests your all type of analytical knowledge as well as mathematical reasoning and all these things. So try to solve these problems on your own. It will be very interesting once you solve one or two problems like that. So thank you.